Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Eli Infante and today we're going to do a Photoshop full edit video showing you my process from beginning to end from frequency separation, dodge and burn and color grading. Now this tutorial is going to be more of an intermediate tutorial because I wanted to make the video as fast as possible but more than likely it probably is going to be a very long video. But don't worry, I do plan on making more beginner level videos in the future. I do have some videos dedicated specifically for frequency separation and my color grading. So check out those videos. I'm going to have the links in the description below. But let's go ahead and get started and cover todo el pedo. Now before we get into Photoshop, I just quickly want to show you what it looked like out of camera in RAW using Capture One and the minor tweaks that I made. So in Capture One, I literally just made a layer one, which was just tweaking the color here with the uh, shadow, midtones, and the highlights. And then I had the HDR, which is just the high dynamic range slider, which is just adjusting the exposure ever so slightly. So if I hit this check mark, this is the before, the after, and then the subtle color tweaks. Now let's jump into Photoshop. And now we're the first thing that I like to do when I'm in Photoshop is I have these actions. Now I made all of these actions. Let me emphasize that I made these actions to make my workflow a lot faster. Anytime that I can create something that's going to make my workflow faster as a photographer, I'm going to do that. Now, speaking of my workflow in 2019, my biggest mistake and my biggest hurdle was remembering all of my passwords for all the platforms from being a full time teacher, being a photographer and running my business and all of my personal accounts. I don't know how many times I put forgot my password, had to reset my email from my bank accounts. And that leads me to today's sponsor, which is Dashlane. Now Dashlane is a mobile and desktop app that gives you a shortcut for everything you do online. It saves all of your passwords, credit cards, and personal information safely in one place and makes the internet a one click autofill experience. Download the app for free on your first device. Create your own master password to protect all of your data. And you want to know what's actually really cool about that is that not even Dashlane stores your master password. So even if hackers were to encrypt the info, that would be completely useless for hackers. Try Dashlane for free on your first device by clicking on my link below and also automatically get a 30 day free trial of Dashlane's premium version. No credit card required at sign up. Check out the app that has over 1 million downloads and over 50,000 five star reviews. If you guys truly want to support me by clicking the link down below, that does support the channel and I would truly, truly appreciate it. Now on to the tutorial. The first layer I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my cleanup layer, which is basically just a duplicate layer. And this is where I usually fix kind of anything that I find distracting. So in this case, I'm probably going to tweak the hair just a little bit and kind of remove that. So I'm just going to push J on the keyboard. And I'm going to see if the spot removal does a good job of removing the hair there. That one looks good. I'll go here. And so luckily, because I shot in not at, at night, there's not going to be a lot of distractions. Um, and then she's wearing the beanie too. So it's really not a not a lot of things to really fix. And I was using the Sigma 135 for this image. And I think I need to tweak the top here. So we have the beanie and there's a little strand coming out. So I'm gonna just fix that real quick. And for the most part, the kind of fixing the imperfections is pretty much done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into frequency separation. Now lately with my frequency separation, I've been using it more to fix things like the hair and the wardrobe. I used to use it on the face, but for the past you know month or two, I haven't really been doing anything on the face with frequency separation. I've been wait, I've been using more dodge and burn for that. So I'm gonna zoom out here and the radius that I'm gonna choose is going to be based on the texture because I use frequency separation to remove the blemishes. So I don't want it to be too high of a number. So I'm going to choose a number where the texture is blurred out. And I think nine looks pretty good. I'll just bump it up to 10 just for the heck of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. 
And now I've basically separated color and texture by using frequency separation. If you want a more thorough explanation of frequency separation, I already have a dedicated video. It's in the description below. Check that out. I go over everything. My actions there are also for free. So check that out. So I have my helper layer. I don't think I'm going to need this right now, but basically I'm going to zoom in and I am going to remove any kind of blemishes. Uh, Alexandra has great skin, so I'm not going to have to remove that much. So I'm going to, I like to use the clone stamp uh, for this process. I'm going to make sure current layer is selected. And all I'm going to do is hold alt on the keyboard so that I can sample and replace that texture. I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of maybe minute or two. I'm probably going to fast forward this part because this is something I think that everybody understands. So once again, all I'm really doing right now is I'm just holding alt to sample some texture and I'm just copying it over because I'm with frequency separation. I'm not manipulating the color. So if I hold alt here, this is what I'm doing. I have that and then I have the color layer on its own so that I don't manipulate the two. So that's what's really powerful and awesome about frequency separation. And that's pretty much it for the skin. So I'm just going to click the before and the after. I'm going to hit this little eyeball to kind of make sure I have everything out. And everything's pretty much been adjusted. Um, I might get this part of the texture I'm going to clean up right here. So I'm going to hold Alt, get that. There we go. Cool beans. That looks better. Awesome. So I'm going to delete my helper layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my dodge and burn action. I'm going to group these, pressing control G. And on my contrast, I am going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I have to emphasize, uh, I get the question I get the most is like, how do I get my skin? How do I, you know, uh, skin retouch basically. And like people think that there's a secret. If you want to know the secret, it's, it's dodge and burn. Dodge and burn is the one that really makes the, the image pop. And using your helper layers is what's really, really going to make the dodge and burn process a lot easier. Um, if you want me to make a dedicated dodge and burn video, let me know. I was going to do it, but you guys voted for a full edit instead of a dodge and burn. But more than likely, I'll do a dodge and burn uh, later on. But uh, so I'm going to use this basically, this uh, curves here. I'm going to use this to add contrast into my image so that I can see the kind of parts of the skin where they are not transitioning really well and kind of smooth out the transition in the skin. So I already have my dodge and my burn. If you want to see the curves that I have, it's nothing fancy. I'm just raise it up that way. And then the burn raising it down so that I can darken. So dodge is going to brighten or lighten. Burn is going to darken. So, and I also have a 50% gray layer here. So I'm going to go to dodge. I'm going to push B on the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to have a white brush. I can actually brush in that effect. I do have a brush that I created called Dodge and Burn Todo el Pedo. So I have that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and use my Wacom tablet. This is really, really helpful to make this process a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and now just find areas that I want to blend in just a little bit more. And I know some people probably are going to tell me, hey, Eli, I wish you would have zoomed in so that I could see what you're doing. The problem is, is one of the biggest mistakes that I used to make when I was retouching was zooming in way too much when I was doing dodge and burn. So I like to zoom out. So I apologize ahead of time if you feel like you can't see what's happening. But if I zoom in, I'm going to end up screwing up the whole entire image. So that's why I'm not zooming in that much. Uh, I typically, my general rule for myself is to be around 300 
as I'm doing my base dodge and burn. And what I like to do is I like to focus on one area first. So in this case, I'm gonna be focused on the forehead and then I'll make my way around the entire image. I don't wanna be jumping around all over the place at the beginning. I wanna focus all my attention on one area. And the main reason for that is the helper layer is kind of specified specifically for, or I'm adjusting the, the settings here specifically for the forehead area. And so each time I move to another area, I'm gonna be adjusting this and kind of tweaking it to once again, kind of follow what I'm kind of trying to achieve here. So I'm gonna go back to my dodge. And my brush settings, by the way, if you look up here, it's 100% opacity, 1% flow. Uh, that's what usually works best for me. Sometimes I'll do 2% flow. It is gonna be different if you're using uh, a mouse. So I'm gonna click the eyeball here so you guys can see the before and after of what I've done so far. So I'm gonna click that, perfect. So let me take a look at it. So this is the before and then this is the after. Now this is where I can actually zoom in. So those of you that really wanna see what's going on here, I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. So let's look at the forehead here. This is the before and then this is the after, just a subtle effect, but this is what's making everything kind of look nice and smooth. So I'm gonna put my helper layer back on I'm gonna zoom out to about 300. And basically what you're gonna see me do in this entire process is I'm gonna be readjusting my helper layer, zooming in and out. I'm gonna be turning on and off the helper layer just to make sure that everything's looking the way it needs to be. And I might be fast forwarding certain parts because the dodge and burn, if you're curious, you're, uh, another question that I get a lot is like, how long does it take me? It really depends on an image to image basis, but more often than not, I'm looking at about 30 minutes to an hour, give or take. More often, it's gonna be about 30 minutes, probably. Um, and a lot of the times, it's just because I just wanna make sure that things are transitioning really well and kind of get the image basically where I want. On this part, I am gonna burn it just a little bit because this part right here is a little bit brighter because I had my, my light camera right. I can look at our catch lights. So this part got a little bit brighter than I wanted. So I'm gonna kind of burn it just a little bit so it transitions a little bit smoother. And there we go. I'm gonna go back to my dodge and I can still see some areas that might need to be adjusted. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more now so I can get a little bit more of these little small areas here. And now I'm gonna focus on this side of the face. I'm gonna focus on the nose, this cheek, and then I'm gonna make my way down to the cheekbone and then the lips down there. Here's another example. I'm turned off the helper layer and just look at the right side of the face. Look how now I've kind of fixed those transitions once again. And this process is all about adjusting your helper layer using this little Wacom tablet. This thing's like magic right here and just kind of just taking your time, play some chill music and just go from there. what I'm doing now, now when you start working with your shadows, this is where you're gonna start to increase on your helper layer. 
the shadow areas, you're gonna raise it up. So give it more exposure to really see where the inconsistencies are lying in the specific um, parts. And since the left side of the image wasn't getting a lot of light, uh, on this side of the cheek, um, I'm having to bring up that contrast helper layer so that I can see and smooth things out on this side. So I've already worked on the forehead, I've already worked on the cheek uh, to the photo right, so I've already worked on the chin, and this is gonna, I think, be the last part, then I'll kind of look at the overall image and see maybe sometimes I might overdo it and I might, you know, undo a couple of things or tweak it and just perfect it a little bit. So looking at the image, once you're done with dodge and burn, you want to kind of just check, turn off your helper layers, click the eyeball, and just kind of double check, you know, did you maybe go overboard on some parts? Or are there any parts that you're missing? Um, it's a good idea to zoom all the way out and then zoom all the way in. This is a good time to take a coffee break and kind of figure out, is there anything that I need to make some adjustments for? Because um, this, once you're done with this part, you know, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I kind of lost my track. But basically, when you get to this part after dodge and burn, it's very important to take a break and kind of double check. Did everything look good? Did I go overboard? Do I need to make some adjustments? So take some time to zoom out and zoom in to kind of check if things are looking okay. When I zoom out in this image, I think the image is looking pretty good. I think the dodge and burn looks really nice. I am going to fix the forehead. I felt like I dodged it a little bit too much up here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm actually going to burn it. I'm going to add a little bit more of that shape back into it up here. Because there was a little bit of that shape. So let's do the before and then the after. That looks fine. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm noticing the nose needs to be burned a little bit right here. There we go. Good. And let me zoom out again. Let me double check some more stuff. Before and after. Everything's looking pretty good. I might just burn a little bit here to bring more of that shape back. Or I'll just go to the dodge, press X to invert that and just bring a little bit of that shape back right about there. I think that looks good. Let's click the before and then the after. So from what I'm seeing, I, I like the image. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, looking at the image, now keep in mind, I haven't even started color grading. And the image is already looking awesome. I think it's very important. I got to emphasize that this is one of the things that I love using off camera flash for is I've already sculpted the light. I've essentially did my dodge and burn already with the light. So now I can, now it's really onto the fun stuff, the color grading and kind of seeing what I can come up with, with the image. But for the most part, the image is already looking good, just right out of, out of camera. And then just doing a little bit of dodge and burn, dodge and burn literally took me, and this is the second time editing the image, maybe 15 minutes and that's it. And we're ready to move on to the next step. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of global dodge and burn to the overall image. Um, but one of the things that I forgot to do a while ago was go into frequency separation. I want to go to my color layer and there's a couple of things that I didn't fix the first time I edited this image. So now that I'm doing a second time, I do want to fix this little shadow here. So I'm going to use my mixer brush. I'm going to push shift beam and I'm going to move this up and down. I'm just going to blend that color up and down so that that kind of blends through. So if I do the before and then the after I fix that. Um, I'm going to also fix this little area here. And just a reminder, guys, if you want to know what, how the mixer brush works and what exactly I'm doing here, I have a dedicated frequency separation video on my YouTube channel. And the link is in the description. So there we go. So I just wanted to make those tweaks really quick. 
So now what I want to do is I'm going to use my global action. So I'm going to close my frequency separation because I wanted to go back just to fix those little parts there. And you can see that they were adjusted there. Here's my local dodge and burn. That's looking nice. And then now I'm going to go to my global. So I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the top layer here. And I'm going to click global. And this is where I'm going to use the white and black brush here. This is where I might change it to 2% now flow. And now my main focus is going to be the eyes. And I'm going to push the B on the keyboard to make sure I have my brush. And I'm going to brush on this side of the eye because if the light's camera right, I should have a little bit of light coming through here. Okay. I'm actually, you know what? I actually don't like it. I'm actually going to redo it. I'm going to start over. I didn't like it. I think I went a little bit overboard. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to 1%. And I'm going to go ahead and brush in on the eyes. And I had to re-record this part because I was trying to do it. And I just didn't like what I had. So I had to delete the global. I was trying to do the eyes right now. And I kind of just went a little bit overboard. So that's why I decided to redo that part of the video. And now I'm going to burn this area here because it's a little bit too bright. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And the eyes, there we go. I'm gonna go on to the lips and I'm gonna go here. And I am gonna add just a little bit more light onto these lips on the top here. Okay, and I'm gonna record another video here, there we go. And I am going to add a line here of light. I'm also going to add a little bit more light onto this cheek. Maybe not that much. Let me undo that. Sorry. Right there. Add just a little bit here. Add a little bit there. I'm going to darken the eyebrows. Darken that. Darken up a little bit underneath the lips there. And so for the most part, I'm just doing some global stuff and this is what I have so far. And I'm digging that, totally digging that. Looks good. Let me zoom out. Might burn a little bit right here because the shirt seems a little bit overexposed. So let me burn here. Burn a little bit there, a little bit there. I'm going to brighten up the, the hair or the parts where there's highlights. I'll burn a little bit of the beanie. Okay, let me zoom out. And let's take a look at the overall image. I'm going to zoom in right about here because this is where the main image is. At, I'm going to click, I'm going to hold Alt. This is the before and this is the after, before and then after. Now that we're done with the skin retouching, I'm going to kind of get into now the selective color and we're going to get into kind of color grading the image. I am going to adjust the exposure on the image. So I'm going to hold and click here. I'm going to go to levels and I'm going to add a little bit of a brightness to the image, just a little bit. So I'm going to bring it in just a little bit, just like that. That looks good. And then now I'm going to do a selective color. And what I did here is I went and I kind of adjusted the reds, like the overall tones in the red. So I had eight and then I did five, I did seven. And the reason why I love selective color is that I'm able to manipulate that specific skin tone or that specific color. And it just gives me a little bit more flexibility. And I feel like it's the easiest one to use and the easiest one to also understand. So the reds and the yellows, that's pretty easy to understand. Like that's where my skin tones are at. So that's why I adjusted those. But now I'm going to go into the cyans because I have this kind of coat that she was wearing. So that's why I'm going to now adjust the exposure. Now I do have my selective color set to luminosity. 
So when I do that, basically what it turns into, it kind of turns into like an HSL kind of slider. I'm just kind of adjusting the luminance values of that specific color and I'm not actually manipulating the specific color in the sense of the color itself. I'm adjusting the tones, the exposure, the brightness levels and the darkness levels of that specific color that I selected. So I like to do that first and now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get into my skin tones. So when I went when I went in and I added my skin tones, what I did is I have it regular and then on my reds, I'm just going to enter the settings that I had. I had negative 20. Then I had negative two. And my best advice for you guys for doing the skin tones and I'm going to zoom in because I know a lot of people told me last time that I did it, they wanted to see more of a close up. So I'm going to see, put that right there. So this is the before and then the after. And the best advice for selective color is that you have to kind of train your eyes to kind of know what areas to kind of tweak. I'll admit I'm not perfect at it. At times I kind of mess up my color. So a lot of times I'll send my photos to Marco kind of just to make sure that the colors are looking good. So I set the reds up because reds, that's where the skin tone color is going to be at. Also the yellow. So that's what I did next is I went to yellows and then I entered the following settings. So I did negative 43. I did 15. I did 10 and I left the last one at zero. So let's click the eyeball so we can see the before and then the after before and then after. And then I also went in to the whites and then I did one and then I did eight on the blacks just like that. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more so you can see the overall image right about there. So before, after, before, after. I also have a color grading video on the skin tones. I also use color balance and I use some gradient maps. Once again, link in the description if you want to learn more about how I do my skin tones. Once I was done with that, then I added a color balance layer. And all I simply did is on the midtones, I just added a little bit more red. On the shadows, I went ahead and I added just two on the blues just to add some blue tones. And then on the highlights, just to get a little bit of that yellow back into the bright areas. And there you go. Then I have this curves um, action that I have that I like to use. So I'm gonna hit play. And it kind of just adds just a little bit of a like red tint to the image. So I'll use this every once in a while. I'll use it on a lot of images. But as you guys are looking at it, you'll notice that it's not a big difference. It's just a subtle difference. Okay. Now, the next thing that I did is I believe I went into camera raw. Let me look at my notes here. Yes, I went into camera raw. So let's look at what I did for camera raw. So I'm going to run my camera raw Vato Loco action. And all that's really going to do is that it's going to merge everything. It's going to make it into a smart object. And then it's going to allow me to get into camera raw to make some additional tweaks to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and let that load, kind of let that kind of play through and um, kind of go from there. And there we go. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and open up camera raw. So all I got to do is double click there. Perfect. And I already saved the preset, so I don't have to enter the settings because that's going to take forever. And here it is, Alexandra Knight. And here we go. So let's kind of look at what I tweaked. It was contrast. I added plus two. The shadows plus two and the clarity at one. The curves, I did add some highlights plus three and lights one. HSL on the luminance. These were the settings that I tweaked. And once again, I'm tweaking specifically the red and the oranges because those are in the skin tones, the blues and the aquas because that's the jacket there. Saturation, I brought the saturation up on the blues to plus eight because of the jacket again or coat. And the same thing with the hue, adjusting the red, oranges, and yellows to tweak the skin tone. Aquas and blues for the coat. I did split toning. I have my highlights. I added some cool tones to the highlights. And in the shadows, I added these kind of brown tones. I did add some grain to the image. And I did add a little bit of vignetting at negative two. And then the calibration, I did have it at these settings, negative one, plus one, plus one, negative one, negative three, and plus five. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And let's take a look at cycle between the before and after. 
so you guys can see that. And you'll notice that it's not that big of a difference, but this is the before. I went into camera raw, and then this is the after. Let me zoom in a little bit more because I have a feeling somebody's going to tell me something. There we go. Somebody's going to leave that comment like, hey, man, you should have zoomed in a little bit more. There you go. So this is the before, and this is the after because of camera raw. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to take a little bit of a break, guys, because this is like totally unscripted, by the way. Like I am just literally talking, and it's so hard because like you're editing. You're like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to say next? So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna collect my thoughts here, look at my notes on what needs to happen next, and then we're almost done with this image. So after I'm done with Camera Raw, what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of contrast to my image. So I have an action called Contrast Pop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the brush tool. I'm gonna to get the white brush. And I'm gonna bring this up to maybe about 50. And I'm gonna darken up just some of these areas back here and this area here and this area okay and this is just to make her pop a little bit from the image all right so i added just a little bit of that let's click the before and after so you guys can see that there we go let me zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see the difference here so before and then the after before after then i went into my color pop vato And I got the brush tool. And I went into the lips. And I just wanted to raise the exposure a little bit on the lips. So I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to make it a lot smaller. And this is just going to add just a nice little glow to the lips. And that was real simple there. I might just add a little bit to the cheek here to make it pop a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more towards the nose here. And maybe just a little bit right there okay and let's see how that looks so before and then after before after i think i overdid the lips a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lower the opacity before after before after there you go you know what i might have overdid the lips but it's okay i'll leave it like at 80. i still think it looks fine i like it now cool beans so the next thing was the red loom that I have. So I love this. It kind of makes the image pop a little bit. So I'm going to run that action. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so you can see what effect that this did to the image. Okay. And this is before and then after. It's just a subtle effect, but it just makes her pop just a little bit more. I'm going to press Control minus to zoom out. So once again, before, after, and then those of you that love the close-ups, this is the close-up of the before and after for the red loom right there. Okay, really, really cool stuff. Okay, then I went into my details pop, and I usually save this to sharpen the eyes. I love having this for the eyes. So I run this little action. And I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm just gonna brush only over the eyes. So I'm gonna increase my flow. Right there. And then right there. And let me just see the before and after. And you see how the eyes just pop now? Just a little bit more. I might bring it down just a bit. 70. There we go. And then another thing that I did, there was a couple of things. As I was looking at the image, I felt like I wanted to play around with the colors a little bit more. So I tried and I experimented with a couple of things. And so in order for me to recreate these, I just saved it into my library so I can drag them in. So if I go to my libraries, there was a gradient map and a selective color that I had made. Here it is, gradient map, Alex. And we're going to drag it onto the image right here. And let me drag that in right there. Actually, you know what? I think I need to hold Alt when I drag it in. There we go. Perfect. So it added it for me. Beautiful. So this is what it was. So it was a selective color and I had to fill at 25. Let's look at the settings that I did. It was the whites at those settings there. I'm going to go a little bit faster so we can kind of get through this video. We're almost done. Two, one, and negative two. Blacks magentas 
blues, cyan's, greens. I'll probably put all the settings on the screen. I think that would make more sense so that we don't have to go over everything. There we go. But let's just kind of look at the before and after of this um, little subtle effect. So I'm gonna put Z on the keyboard. And my best advice, guys, is you have to experiment with the, the selective color. Selective color is like one of my favorite things for color grading, so definitely play around with that. So all it really did is that it just added this subtle, subtle purple tint to the image, and I liked it. And it's just a matter of just playing around in Photoshop with the selective color. And then I went ahead and I added this gradient map, and the same thing, just playing around with colors. I used this specific gradient map, the purples and the greens. I set the blend mode to color and then 3% opacity. And the same thing is just a very, very subtle effect. And I think what this kind of did is that it kind of cooled off. If, let me zoom in a little bit more to the face. What it did is that it cooled off a little bit of those skin tones. It was maybe a little bit too red and it just kind of smoothed it out. It kind of just um, made the color not as shiny. So I kind of like the shine. So maybe I would probably, if I had to redo this image, maybe I'd just do a two opacity or maybe not even include it. But that's what I had on the image that you guys saw when I posted on Instagram and on Facebook. And guess what guys, we are pretty much done. We're on to the last step. The last step basically was just adding another curves, curves, a levels layer and just adding just a little bit more exposure with this highlight. So I'm just gonna drag this little corner just to make sure she pops a little bit. Okay, so this is it. With, this is what it looks like without it. And then I increase it to the left and I add just that little pop, okay. And right about here. Come on computer, you can do it. I'm gonna drag that to the left. And that's pretty much it guys. So I'm gonna kind of zoom out here. I'm gonna show you the before and after. So before and then the after. Let's zoom in one more time here. So you guys can see more of the details. Before and after. And then of course, before I sent it off to Instagram and Facebook, I went in and I cropped the image. So I'm just gonna get the crop tool, bring this down. I don't like to crop my images until I'm done with the edit. So I know there was a lot of black up there and you're probably wondering like, why did he leave it like that? Um, but I usually save it to the end. And so once I've done that, just hit enter. And that's pretty much it guys. I truly appreciate it. If you saw this whole video, thank you so much for watching. Truly appreciate it. And then let me know if you guys wanna see more Photoshop edits. Do you also wanna see Capture One edits? I, I've been highly considering doing some Capture One raw editing tutorials. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.